So I know there's a few of you that um, are interested in this um, topic today that can make it. Um, so uh, hopefully uh, you like the reporting and if you have some questions, you know, let us know later. Um, so today I'll be talking about like finding uh, marker genes in single cell, single nucleus RNA-seq data. Um, and I wanted to talk about it because there's, it gets complicated basically. And when people say like, hey, can you find a marker gene? That actually can mean very different things. Um, and so it's, I think it's a great uh, topic to, to review a bit more um, slowly. And so um, as usual on the spreadsheet for the Arsys Club, you can find the link to a Google Doc where I'm gonna be putting some um, um, right. um, so I don't actually have a lot of links um, today, but um, um, we might need to have a bit of drawings and stuff like that. All right. So the first link I have is for this paper that I'm a co-author on, but like um, the main point that I want to show is when we're doing differential expression uh, and we have two groups, the typical plot to represent the data is box plots, right? Um, and at that point, what we're really calculating is a t-test uh, comparing the, the means of group one versus group two, right? Um, so when people say like, hey, can you find differential expressions in a case control analysis or two group analysis? This is the type of uh, statistic we do, the type of plot we do. Um, it's, there's basically like two interpretations. It's either higher on group one than group two or like lower on group one than group two, right? Um, so um, either direction could be of interest to us. And so here we have um, this first gene that is like lower on the red group than the blue, then the second gene, which is the reverse, right? Um, and most of the times when we're working with bulk RNA-seq, um, things are actually expressed. So the y-axis over here doesn't start at zero. Most of the times, you can see here on this one over here, it does start at zero, but the, the blue points, I think only one of them is at zero. Most of them are not at zero. Right. Um, so those are some two properties that have um, helped us a lot in bulk RNA-seq. Uh, the property that there's only two groups most of the times, and then the property that um, um, most values are non-zero, right? So we have actual numbers. Um, in single, single cell or single nucleus RNA-seq, that won't be the case anymore. And so um, the next link over here is from this ggpub R package, which is just a general um, package for making plots. But we're going to have something like this in single nucleus RNA-seq, where we're going to start having more than two, uh, two groups. Uh, so let's say we have, in this, imagine we have like three different cell types, right? Um, so when you say I want a marker gene across these three different cell types, that can mean a few different things. So let me go further below to this plot over here. This plot over here shows um, the paired, the, the p-value for paired, I think they're paired t-tests. Um, so blue versus um, yellow or orange then yellow or orange versus red, then red and blue, right? Um, and so a marker gene in this case, you could argue that it's um, uh, the difference, a gene that is significantly different even between two, um, the two most related groups. Um, so this p-value over here, 0 0.001, is actually a larger p-value than, than this one over here 
8.4 to the minus 8, right? So if we're looking for a marker gene for the red group. You could argue that, like, hey, um, um, the this gene could be one because even between the two most um, closely related groups, there is a significant difference. I mean, of course, you would need to like adjust those p-values by FDR or something like that, right? And once you do it across multiple genes. Um, however, you could argue that actually, maybe you're interested in the strongest differential expression signal. So that would be blue versus red in that case. Uh, maybe you're trying to find genes like that. Um, or uh, what you could also do is group these two guys together and then try to compare them against the red. Um, and so if you do that, you're basically going back to, uh, sorry, I'm getting zoom out of the way. You're basically going back to the scenario that we were talking about in bulk RNA seq, um, where you're just comparing two groups. So all of those options exist. Um, I want to pause here a little bit. People have questions about about these three options, uh, about all these options. Let me uh, pause the recording. I am. So I thought like showing plots here would be useful to understand um, visually the type of marker genes we're going to find later. So we go back to the Google Doc. Um, uh, the fourth link over here is from um, presentation based on slides that Louis made. Um, and so in this case, this presentation is about deconvolution. And then for the convolution, we also need marker genes. Uh, but maybe we want a slightly different marker genes. Um, and so the reason why we might want genes that have a different property is we want to get something like that looks like this, like this ideal heat map, where we have genes on the rows, we have different um, um, uh, cell types for specific donors on the columns. So at this point, we have like um, sort of bulk the data. Um, and we want to have a gene that is like expressed here, for example, for the green cell types. So here are five genes that are expressed on the green cell type. Um, and you can see the green cell type on the columns is just the first two. And then on the rows, uh, the marker genes for the green cell type would be the ones here on the rows. And so ideally, we want something like this, that is um, like, as, um, like very much like on or off type of thing. Um, and that's something you can actually get with DNA methylation, uh, where you can look for uh, CPG sites that are either methylated or completely unmethylated. Uh, so fully methylated or, or fully unmethylated in specific uh, cell types and why deconvolution with DNA methylation data can work so well, right? Because you're basically looking at uh, ones or zeros. Um, and so maybe you want to find a gene like this. Um, but a gene like this doesn't necessarily mean this is a gene that helps you label or annotate the best a particular um, cell type. Um, so there's different goals in mind. Um, and so um, one option we have done in the past is, for example, we're looking at oligos, uh, in order to annotate the different clusters in the Tran and L paper, what the strategy that we used was like, let's look at one cell type, in this case, uh, what we ended up calling oligos, um, and then compare them against everything else, everything not oligo. So let me zoom in so you can see it a bit bigger. Um, right. Um, and so these are like, the type of markers that um, uh, Tran et al. Uh, found, right? Um, to label the, the different clusters 
of single cell or single nucleus data. Um, so this we call it like the one versus all strategy, um, but it's also like an enrichment strategy, you could argue, because even though we're doing um, only two box plus at a time here, now, unlike the bulk RNA-C, the y-axis can actually start at zero, and you can see a tons of zeros over here. Um, and so we're not really looking for genes that are depleted, so that means the differential expressed between our cell type and everything else, but at a lower value, right? So we go back to um, so this plot over here. We're not looking for uh, genes like this, where like our cell type of interest is the red one, and they have a lower value than like everything else. We don't, we don't necessarily, we're not looking for those, right? Because with single nucleus RNA seq or single cell RNA seq, that will be cases where like maybe it's all zero over here. There's some expression on the other one, um, but um, zeros are hard to trust in single cell or single nucleus RNA seq just because um, you might get them due to um, uh, the nature of how much money we spend on sequencing and how like these libraries are generated, et cetera, right? So there's, there's a zero inflation in single cell or single nucleus RNA seq. Um, okay. So this strategy of, of one versus all was useful for labeling clusters. And so if you look at the um, supplementary tables from like Tran et al, for example, you'll find that he posted, I think, the top 40 um, marker genes based on this strategy uh, for the different clusters he had. Now for the convolution, though, uh, we don't necessarily want that because once you break it up into each of the individual's um, cell types, for example, here, MVP, Right, it's actually, I mean, uh, can help label oligos, but if you look at the expression of MVP, oligo, the, there is some expression of it on OPCs. Um, and so if you look at the closest one to orange, oligos, that would be OPC. And maybe that ratio isn't as clean. Maybe we can find some genes that are uh, cleaner for the convolution. And so that led us to this strategy with, with Luis, the mean ratio strategy, where we look at, um, um, where we look at um, the expression of the mean of our target subtype against the highest non-target, do that ratio, um, and then rank genes that way. Um, and so for example, uh, ST18, if you look at that, then that ratio between, for example, in this case, it's oligo versus OPC, it's a pretty high number, 20, right? Um, and so sure, it's not like perfectly clean. There are some outlier cells in the other cell types that have high expression of ST18, but um, it is as clean as you can get, I guess, with, with this type of data. So, um, cool. So now we have um, uh, we have a lot of uh, different types of marker genes. Um, so let me talk a little bit about how you actually find them. So for this, um, just one second. Right. So I added to the Google Doc. Um, a picture I took the other day from here on the, on the boardroom for us trying to explain um, this to another group. Um, and so, uh, let me zoom in a bit more. Um, so to explain a bit what we have here, we have the mean ratio on its own corner. Um, and then we have another function called find markers. Find markers is a function from the scram package. And that function has um, an argument called the p-value argument. And it can take the three different values, 
any, some, or all. Um, and this will influence what is the type of gene that you're looking at, that you're trying to find. Um, when you're saying, I want to look at all the p-values, what it's actually going to do is going to find the differential expression signal that is the weakest. So that is another way of saying this is going to try to find the most similar pairwise comparison and look at that p-value. Um, so if we go to this plot over here, let me clean up the notation. Um, um, so let's say we're looking for things for um, this red group over here. Um, so that's our group of interest. Um, all in this case, will look at this guy over here because it's the um, largest p-value. Um, uh, so the weakest differential expression. Um, Mm -hmm. This annotated it takes a while. So the weakest um, pairwise comparison that we have, if we use any, um, that will actually find uh, it was supposed to be an A. That will find the strongest pairwise comparison. Strongest too long to, for me to write. <laughs> so I'll just um, label it as STR. Um, all right. So um, that is what this uh, find markers function can do. It will do all the pairwise comparisons, compute all of these p values, and then um, it, you need to choose what do you want, right? Um, uh, because for a single gene, let's say you have uh, 10 different cell types, so that's uh, nine pairwise comparisons for when you're looking at one particular cell type. If you have nine p-values, which is the actual p-value that you're going to assign to that gene, right? So if you say all, that will be the weakest, so the largest p-value, um, or like um, the p-value from the comparison that is most similar. Um, and if you're using any, that will be uh, uh, the strongest comparison. And so when you apply these to actual data, when you say uh, find the markers with any, um, you can actually find a ton of markers for each uh, cluster that you have. For us, when you say find markers with all, you might not find a single gene. Um, there might not be any any um, genes are actually um, differentially, significantly differentially expressed between uh, a particular cluster and its closest cluster to it, right? And so that could be that, well, maybe you have, for example, excitatory um, neurons uh, 14 versus excitatory neurons 15. You have like very highly um, similar clusters. Um, um, all right. So with that in mind, um, all will give you the weakest, right? Now, if you want to do the trend at all enrichment method, so one versus all, we also use the find markers function. But before we actually run things, we pull every, uh, let's say we're looking at this red cell type. So in this case, we would pull the black and the blue cell type together, and then we were doing that uh, pairwise comparison. Um, so we have a few key properties so far, right? Like um, we have more than one, more than two groups, sorry. And we have things that um, uh, we don't trust the zeros necessarily. And so that's why we're looking for enrichment. So that means 
higher expression in our target cell type than the rest. Um, we're not looking for depletion, which means like lower expression in our target cell type against the rest. Um, but something that might be uh, uh, not so uh, obvious initially is uh, if we go back to this plot, um, what are the properties that you observe between these three groups? Right. Um, something that you might even be like, oh, well, maybe that wasn't even a property um, to begin with, is these three groups over here in this uh, example data have a similar number of points on each of the three groups. That won't be the case when we're comparing clusters of single cell or single nucleus RNA seq data. Because we could have a tiny cluster with, let's say, 50 nuclei, and we could have a huge cluster with, let's say, 2,000 nuclei or you know, 5,000 nuclei, things like that. Um, why does that matter, right? Well, that matters quite a bit when you're doing this one versus all style or you're pulling everything else. And so um, we have a data set where out of 77,000 or so nuclei, around 28,000 of them are oligodendrocytes. Um, so when, when we pull things, these one versus all enrichment marker genes are going to be dominated by um, what's different between your, tar uh, your current cluster versus all the oligodendrocytes uh, because they dominate this pool, right? They're a huge uh, percent of it. Um, so sometimes um, when you're doing the enrichment, you might just want to do it on a particular subset. So for example, here I was proposing that we could do it within just the excitatory neuron um, um, clusters that we have. So in, in, in this particular data set, we have 15 of them. So instead of doing one versus all globally, we could just do it within the excitatory neurons to, uh, to say like, okay, what's different between excitatory neuron one versus excitatory neuron uh, 15, for example. Uh, we know that all of them are excitatory neurons because they express some of the key markers for excitatory neurons, but within, uh, within the, um, those clusters, we have um, not as a clear idea necessarily. Um, so the denominator, right, can, can influence things quite a bit here when you're doing the one versus all. Um, I think it could also uh, influence things when you're looking at the fine marker strategy where you're doing all the pairwise comparisons. So you remember um, all and any, um, where like you look, all was like you look at the weakest differential expression signal, so the largest p value. So for red, that would be um, um, yellowish or orange versus red. Um, and then um, um, any was uh, the opposite, right? The, the strongest uh, differential expression signal, so the smallest p-value, in this case, blue versus red, right? But imagine we have um, um, another cell type over here, um, which um, is more differentially expressed than yellow orange, but less than blue, right? Now, let's say, like, say that like blue is the oligos, and the rest of them are like excitatory neurons. So like E1, 2, and 3, right? So it could be a case when we use any, it's gonna give us things that are like maybe too obvious. So like, okay, um, uh, it's gonna say like, yeah, clearly like oligos are very different from excitatory neurons. Um, and so my, maybe we're not really interested in that. Maybe we're interested in something like this, this comparison, which is uh, the strongest differential expression signal within, um, um, 
cell uh, clusters of the same broad cell type. Um, and if, that, if that's the case, then you would need a subset of data, remove these guys, and then use um, fine markers with p-value any, right? And so as you can see, there's a lot of different options of what you can do. Um, um, and the context then of what is a marker gene changes quite a bit. Um, um, so, um, yeah, that's uh, uh, basically the, the summary of what I, I mean, the, the whole thing of what I wanted to talk about today. Um, um, so you understand that there's like a lot of different options when we talk about marker genes and um, you might depend on your goal, what you want, right? Are you trying to do like the convolution? And I would suggest like maybe doing the mean ratio one. Um, uh, are you, um, normally you can say like, hey, let's look at fine markers, p-value all, which will be the weakest signal. Uh, so that will be the, the signal that is, um, if there's any significant differential expression between your current cluster and the most closely related to it, you might be interested in that and you find some marker genes at that point, maybe you're good to go to label your uh, single cell or single nucleus RNA-C clusters. Uh, but in a lot of cases, you might get zeros here, right? Because things could be really similar. Um, and so at that point, you might want to try something else. You could do the one versus all style, but beware at that point when you're pulling, you're going to rely heavily on, or your results are gonna be influenced by the size of the groups. And so if you're looking at, um, you know, excitator, let's say near 15, but then your pull is dominated by your oligos, um, the differences between oligos and excitatory neurons could influence like what? Genes come up first. Um, oh, um, and uh, uh, um, I'm sorry to tell you in a way, <laughs> uh, but maybe it's good also in another way that that's not the end of it. Um, there's some, there's another option that's between some and all. Um, and some of those tests involve uh, go beyond t-tests, they go to Wilcoxon tests and do other things. Um, but I was, I was focusing here more on the extreme cases of any and all, um, rather than like the intermediate cases. Um, boom. Uh, with that, I wanna stop the recording. Thank you very much and we'll see you next week.